Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mini Scroll, the daily internet culture podcast bringing you the biggest stories from social media, the creator economy, and the digital space every Monday through Thursday. I'm your host, Lauren Meisner, the founder of the youth digital media brand Centennial World. So just a quick little scheduling update for you guys. So today, this is the last mini scroll of the week, April 17th on Wednesday. There will be no mini scroll tomorrow because I'm actually going to Noosa on a brand trip with Shark Beauty. So this all just came up last week and I was so excited because you guys know if you've listened to the podcast for a while, I went to Noosa last year with my family and it's literally one of my favorite places I've ever been in Australia. I loved it so much. So I am so excited. I offered for the earlier flight so I could have like a full day there and just to chill out and hang out. I really considered if I should do the afternoon flight so I could do mini scroll in the morning and then everyone around me, like my husband, my team, they were all just like, go and take this free day and like take a vacation day. So that's what I'm going to do. So there will still be a deep dive on Friday as always, but tomorrow there will be no mini scroll. All right, let's just jump right into it. So the first story that I have for you guys is that Marquise Brownlee has been facing backlash for giving a negative product review on the Humane AI pin. So tech YouTuber Marquise Brownlee is being called out by tech bros on Twitter for calling the Humane AI pin, quote, the worst product he has ever reviewed. For anyone that doesn't know, Marquise is one of the biggest tech YouTubers on the platform with over 18 million subscribers. His entire job is to review tech products and he has given many negative reviews in his career. So the Humane AI pin is like a wearable computer. It's basically a brooch that you clip onto your shirt that can answer questions, take photos, take videos and send messages allegedly, and it costs $700. So the pin is new and many tech journalists and creators have been trying this and giving reviews and the vast majority of these reviews have been negative. Most say that the pin just basically doesn't do what it claims it can do, at least not yet. And it's basically nowhere near perfected enough to be on the market. One example is from The Verge, where they showed that the pin actually can't play Beyonce songs because it can't compute with the accent at the end of her last name. So when you ask the pin to play a Beyonce song, it basically says, we don't know what that means. We can't do that. Please pick a different artist or playlist or song. The review for the Wall Street Journal also shows that the pin overheats really easily, it doesn't properly frame photos or videos, and you can't use the projecting screen element outside because it's too bright. So I guess part of the feature is that it like will project a screen onto your palm if you hold it in front of it and you can like do things like that. You can't really do that outside because it's too bright outside so you can't see anything (laughs) on your palm. And they also said that the, the pin doesn't actually have an app connected to it so if you want to like get the media that you've taken, like the videos, photos, whatever, you actually have to like log into a website, which is just a bit like archaic. Though Marquise was certainly not the only one to make a negative review about the product, he is highly visible and incredibly influential. So as a result, his review has faced a ton of criticism. The most viral criticism he received was from a popular ex-user named Daniel Vassallo, who said, I find it distasteful, almost unethical to say this, as in to critique the product, when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why, but with great reach comes great responsibility potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness. First, do no harm. (laughs) And the Marquis actually responded to this and said, we disagree on what my job is. So several creators have come to his defense, noting how important it is that influencers and journalists provide honest reviews, especially for a tech product that costs so much money. Philip DeFranco called Vassallo's tweet, quote, one of the dumbest brain dead takes he has ever seen. This story is so interesting to me because it's like we've come full circle with influencer culture almost. I mean, if you guys know anything about the history of Centennial World, we actually started as Centennial Beauty and the whole point was that we were reporting on the YouTube beauty community, like the online beauty community. And so I am well versed in the review space and we've not really seen anything of this scale in the beauty review space. I think one of the biggest criticisms over the years for influencers influencer culture has been that they don't give honest reviews and they basically just kiss the ass of every brand because they don't want to lose out on sponsorship opportunities. They don't want to get kicked off the PR list, whatever it is. So for Marquise Brownlee, who is highly influential, who has so many followers, 
to be posting a review basically saying, save your money, this product isn't quite ready yet. And then to be getting so much backlash for saying that, for trying to protect his followers and the consumer dollar basically is a wild, like it's it's this wild full circle moment. Like we should not be out here trying to protect the tech bros and their business. Like as a business owner myself, I can imagine that this review would have been very crushing to receive. But at the end of the day, like asking consumers to buy a product that is clearly just not ready yet, has a lot of issues, is also unethical. So it's really wild that this whole thing has blown up like this. And I think that Marquise's tweet is the perfect response to this. Like we disagree on what my job is. His job is to give honest tech reviews. That's it. End of story. Doesn't matter if, you know, he's hurting the feelings of the founders. Doesn't matter if his review plummets the stock price. Doesn't matter how that impacts the company. That's not his issue. Plus, at the end of the day, now everybody is talking about this product. So I don't know. I think this is just such a wild story. It's like we've come full circle and now we're asking influencers to give fake positive reviews to protect the interests of founders. I don't know. All right, the next story that I have for you guys is that Lil Tay has gone off on Jojo Siwa claiming that she has purchased bought Spotify listens on her new song. So in the latest installment of Jojo Siwa's rebrand Gone Wrong, influencer Lil Tay is calling Jojo out on X. Little Tay is an internet personality who was a prominent child influencer with an account run by her family. She is now 14 and she reemerged on social media after her family spread rumors that she had died last year. This was a big story. We covered it last year. I'm sure you guys remember. Uh, but Lil Tay is now back online and she is putting out her own new music. So basically, there was this joke tweet that drama YouTuber Adam McIntyre posted where he compared in like a joking way Lil Tay and Jojo Siwa. Lil Tay saw this and she said, wish I didn't just find out who that is. I wrote Sucker for Green myself. Sucker for Green is her new song. Didn't buy the song or hire a ghostwriter. Please don't mention me and her in the same sentence. And then in response to some people in the comments, she wrote, after some research, I found out she, as in JoJo, associates with pedophiles, buys her songs, and doesn't write her music, and I take my music very seriously and don't want to be compared to frauds. Okay, so TMZ wrote an article about this whole situation on Twitter, and then some, or sorry, X, and then some X user quote tweeted the TMZ article and wrote, quote, there's literally no comparison between JoJo and Lil Tay anyway. JoJo Siwa has a career. Lil Tay is just a meme and a pathetic one at that. So then JoJo Siwa allegedly liked that tweet. Reminder, Lil Tay is 14 years old. And I know that JoJo's young and I think that, you know, out of a lot of people online, I give JoJo a lot of grace because she was also a child star and I think she has absolutely not unpacked what has happened to her. And I think a lot of what she puts out there is like projection and like just having not dealt with anything properly yet. But Lil Tay is 14 and her whole story, the story around Lil Tay is so dark. We all know it. I mean, maybe Jojo isn't super familiar with it, but either way, like it's so dark. It's so sad. She is just such a product of like her parents' greed and just how insidious the online world can become for child influencers. And Jojo of all people should understand that and relate to that and have empathy and sympathy for Lil Tay. So to be liking a tweet like that is so messed up. So Lil Tay has now retaliated. She wrote on X today at It's Jojo Siwa. You're a scary ass bitch. If you think you have something to say about me, say it. And this time, don't delete your comment or unlike shady tweets. Don't let those paid YouTube views and botted Spotify streams get to your head. Madonna from Dollar Tree ass bitch. <laughs> so savage. So Jojo actually has unliked the tweet since then. All right, and the last story that I have for you guys is that Instagram has joined in on the Taylor Swift Easter egg frenzy to celebrate the Tortured Poets Department. Taylor's 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department, is set to release this Friday, April 19th. In celebration, Instagram and threads have hidden Easter eggs on the platforms for Swifties to find. First, a secret album countdown is hidden on Taylor's Instagram page. So if you go to her account on the app and you pull down on her profile, like you're going to refresh it, you will see at the top, it fades in a countdown for the tortured poets department. Second, Threads has two Easter eggs as well. 
So conversations on threads that are using the hashtag, hashtag TTPD, hashtag the tortured poets department, hashtag tortured poets, hashtag TSTTPD, hashtag Swifties and hashtag Taylor Swift. They all trigger this special like shimmer effect when you post it. And celebratory hearts appear on screen when someone likes a post with those hashtags. And Instagram has also said that there is more to come to celebrate. So I think this is pretty fun and cute. I don't know. I'm assuming that this was like in collaboration with Taylor. I don't know if Meta is just doing this themselves. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but yeah, I feel like this is kind of fun. It's cool for the Swifties and, you know... I'm sure that all next week my stories will be about this album <laughs> and all the Easter eggs and uncoding everything. So just get ready for that. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening to Mini Scroll. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. It helps me so much. It helps me grow. It makes my day. And I will talk to you guys next week, but there will still be an episode on Friday that I recorded yesterday for you guys. All right. Talk to you then. Bye.